Today in the Cheapo Spotlight, the all new Rich Meters 900A clamp multimeter. This one features auto power detect. Let's take a look. The RM900A is retailing for approximately 30 to 35 US dollars, bringing it just into the Cheapo realm. Oh, thank goodness. I'd like to thank Tony from Rich Meters for providing the clamp meter for this review. 900A is different than your typical clamp meter. It does have that auto detect. That's right, you turn it on and you have an auto initialize. It should, in theory, differentiate between volts ACDC, resistance, and continuity. Now take note, this does not measure DC current, strictly AC. The Rich Meter ships in a really decent case. I have to say this is one of the nicer cases I've seen in a while. And inside that case, which has that nice Velcro fastener, You've got your leads and a small instruction manual, as well as a clip. So yeah, you can walk around with this thing clipped to you. Make everybody jealous. Starting off with those leads, they are the generic variety that we see virtually on just about every cheapo meter these days. Um, and you know what? They have definitely come up a notch. It is not those uh, incredulously uh, hopeless leads that they're coming so often at one point a couple of years ago. Now these are definitely a step in the right direction. Uh, they feel good in the hand and all in all, nothing negative to say about them as far as cheapo leads are concerned. The only thing I don't like is the fact that the shrouds, they do come off, but boy, you really gotta pull them. Official ratings on the leads are CAT2 1000 volts or CAT3 500. 900A has a refresh rate of three times per second. Now that is refreshing. Wow, okay, um, perhaps not as refreshing as that. And this is one of the caveats about this meter that is different than a lot of the other typical clamps or multimeters is the fact that, yeah, it will auto detect most settings. Now. Configuration wise, there is not a whole lot to do with the 900A. Um, let's take a look at exactly the what the meter is capable of by putting it on the body. Here you can see it does amps, AC, 15 milliamps up to 600. And voltage AC-DC from 0.8 volts to 600 volts. Resistance from zero to 40 mega ohm. And continuity, which will kick in when resistance is less than 50 ohms. Frequency wise, 1 to 100. Well, not too long ago, I did a review on the VC3267A clamp multimeter, and it was pretty impressive for the price. And that was a small clamp. Well, take a look. Yeah, the 900A is actually smaller than 326. Uh, incredible, but true. So, this is definitely a tiny clamp meter. I really like the color scheme of the uh, Rich Meter, the blue. I think they should stick with it. That should be their go-to color. Um, it just looks really, really nice. In a sea of red and yellow, it's definitely something unique. Has a nice feel in the hand. Um, as I said before, it is a small clamp, but it doesn't feel that small. to the test leads and to turn it on you simply hold down on the red power switch for two seconds and away you go you get that nice beep letting you know that it is ready for action and speaking of action it defaults to you got it auto mode now this also does come with a backlight and to enable that you simply hold down on the side and there you go now when that is happening you're also enabling the flashlight there's no way to turn that off independently so you will be in backlight slash flashlight mode. Look at the screen though. Hey, pretty darn nice. Crisp, perhaps a wee bit on the small side, but all being said and done, hey, it looks good to me. Now this backlight will stay on for approximately two minutes. That's a good thing. Now remember, this only has a minimum of 800 millivolts. So we are not gonna be able to test the 250 millivolt range. And once again, it does tell us that right on the chassis itself. Alrighty, let's check out DC volts. Should be looking at 2.50. 
and 2.51, so just a little bit off. As I mentioned, this is auto ranging, so now without doing any other changes, I will start looking at a resistor. And this is a 22 mega ohm resistor and showing up as 23. Here we have a 0.5 ohm resistor, and as you can see, that is below the threshold and it brings us into continuity. It does not do capacitance, it does not do diode. Too bad. Gotta say, it is so nice having a backlight that does not turn off. Oh gosh, it is so nice. All right, next up it is AC mode. I am gonna take the two tips and stick it into an outlet. Here we go. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang, and I should probably plug in the out. Just under 120 volts. No worries there. And as you can see, we have that nice indicator here telling us we are in high voltage mode. Good stuff. We're now in frequency mode, sitting at 964 hertz. Bring it down to 864. Sixty-four hertz. One point seven kilohertz. Three point eight kilohertz. Nine point eight kilohertz. Next up is continuity. Now, once again, this is the auto detect type of continuity, so I'm not expecting very good results, but you never know. Here we go. Default stock test leads. Yeah. Very slow. Now, one thing I did notice. Let me just bring this in a little bit closer. If we look at the top. We do have that visual indicator as well, which is uh, always a bonus. Unfortunately, it is super, super slow. Ah, frustrating. Pro Masters. Oh my gosh, is it possible? I mean, is it actually slower with the Pro Masters? Wow, that is a first. Oh. Seventy eight point nine decibels is the maximum sound output in continuity mode. Next is non contact voltage mode. Simply hold down on the NCV button for two seconds, puts you into EF mode, and bring on the power source. Bring it on. Anybody? So, so-so uh, in the NCV department. Um, eh. 900A is also capable of measuring inrush current. Simply turn the power on, press hold, which is on the side here, twice. That brings you into inrush mode. At that point, put whatever you're measuring, the wire, right within the center of those clamp jaws and turn on that engine or whatever type of equipment you're testing and you should capture the maximum current. I've got this uh, hooked up to a blow dryer right now. We'll see what that initial surge is, also known as the inrush in terms of a current draw. Already the power hair dryer is powered in and here we go. Sort of, we, we can see that I'm having a bad hair day. Oh gosh, no, you can't see that. That's a good thing. No, we can see that the inrush current was 12 amps, pulling a lot of juice to power this Testarossa. Well, that's what they call the hair dryer, honestly. It's called a Testarossa. Go figure. We're now in just regular AC mode current. Here we go. Just a quick test once again with the blow dryer, and we'll just see that uh, how that current flows.
So you can see it's pretty well all over the board on the lower settings and not much current draw at all. But once we are in high mode, yeah, it's pulling around 12 amps. Now on this blow dryer, it is saying that it is 1,875 watts. So if we do the math correctly, um, this is probably pulling more like about 1,500, 1,500 watts as opposed to 1,875. So uh, by using this clamp meter, we can determine that that blow dryer is not as powerful as it claims to be. But it's kind of cool how you can actually test that power factor to see if indeed you are getting what you're paying for. Okay, coming up next, we're gonna take this baby apart and take a look on the inside. 900A is powered by two AAA batteries. As you can see, we have a very nice threaded brass insert so you can take this apart as much as you want without worrying about messing it up. Already the top comes off. Two Phillips screws holding it in. Really nice to get to and let's take a closer look. Here we have a riser board on the common terminal here and that is soldered directly via two pin header onto the main PCB. Input jacks themselves are nicely soldered in. They are the split variety. Main IC is cobbed. Um, surprisingly enough, I'm not seeing any PTCs or mods, anything at all to do in that respect whatsoever. Um, very sparse in terms of the overall input protection here. We do have our resistor array down at the bottom. And moving up the, not, the line here, we have the uh, two battery terminal connectors. They are directly soldered into the PCB. You don't see that too often. Speaker at the top left, and we see a hodgepodge of wires. Wow, those are really in there tight. Nice spring on the clamp mechanism itself. Quite a lot of pressure needed to pull that down. This is the button for the hold and backlight. Basically, that is it. Now this is a fairly heavy little clamp meter, I must say. Um, it does not feel cheap at all. And uh, taking a look at the inside, I was definitely expecting to see a little bit more. Here we are on the other side of the clamp meter. As you can see, yeah, it is slim pickings. Uh, there is our display and the uh, pin headers for the input jacks. And once again, they are nicely soldered in right through that PCB. Speaking of PCB, it is fairly on the thick side, which is always a good thing. Um, hey, that is it. Uh, no other forms of input protection on this side. Um, just the soft touch button uh, sensors and that's all she wrote. So yeah, in a nutshell, there you have it. I'm gonna have some fun putting this back together and I'll come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Rich Meters 900A. Hey, what can I say? This is a pretty nifty little device. Yeah, it doesn't do that DC current. Ah, oh, that would have been so nice, but hey, it still powers a lot into this tiny little package. That inrush current feature is very nice to have and comes in super handy. The auto detect, hey, nothing wrong with that. It's a lot quicker, especially with a device like this. Normally it's one-handed operation and this just makes your life that much simpler. Well-made, well-constructed, overall, nothing really negative to say. And hey, we have a backlight that stays on longer than 15 seconds, Ura! 900A gets a solid 3.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Hey, until the next one, keep on testing.